Howdy folks, welcome back to the Rafter K Rustics Workshop. As you can see, you may be see, we're back in the kitchen again. You know, it's kind of an odd coincidence. I, uh, I had to go to the grocery store and get some vegetables today because the garden varmints have eaten me, well, pretty much out of the garden. And uh, while I was there, I went to the butcher area to check out what exotic meats they had, and lo and behold, They had rabbit on sale. So uh, I decided that tonight we're going to have, and I really don't know what you call this. It's kind of a Creole rabbit with uh, okra and tomatoes. Now, I know some of you right now, the first thing you heard after rabbit was the okra part. And you're going to be going, oh, oh, okra's gross. Okra's so slimy. Think back, buddy. I mean, be real. You ate your own boogers till you're in fourth grade. And besides, when you cook okra the way I'm going to cook it tonight, it doesn't get slimy. It just gets tasty. I mean, give it a try. I think you'll like it. Now, as I said in the Squirrel Bourguignon video, which uh, hopefully you've seen. If not, go watch it. I think it was kind of fun, and, and it was very tasty stuff. Um, cooking isn't rocket science. It's not... It's not chemistry, especially the way I do it. So if you don't have something that I put in here, don't worry about it. Don't say, oh, I can't make the recipe because really I'm not even going to give you a recipe. I'm just going to show you what I do to make it. Um, you know, your store may not sell rabbit and squirrel like mine does, so maybe you have to make it out of chicken thighs. Chicken thighs do real good with this recipe. Uh, or even chicken breast if you're trying to be save on calories and fat and flavor and stuff you know you can make it you could even make it out of some kind of seafood or shrimp or something so you know don't feel like because you don't have something in here that you can't make it now the first step to what we're going to do tonight is we're going to make some seasoning mix so it's kind of a creole seasoning that i use an awful lot of so we're going to start off it's just salt we're going to put in I don't know, about a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to put in... Got to have the cayenne. You'll notice that I... I'm going to put jalapenos in later, but I use cayenne to actually make the heat. The jalapenos I... I uh, cut so that they don't, they don't get hot. We're going to use about a half a teaspoon of cayenne. I don't want this to be too hot because my little girl's going to be eating it and she gets... She likes a little... She likes her tongue to get tickled with the heat a little bit, but not for it to be too hot. What I'm putting in here now is about a teaspoon of white pepper. If you don't use white pepper, if you've never used white pepper, it is very tasty stuff. It's really popular in Louisiana, Cajun kind of cooking. Um, you know, it's, it's pepper, but it's got kind of a musky, I don't know how to explain it, taste. But if you don't have it, you don't need it you can get away without it but if you like this recipe and you want to see if it's better next time get that for next time i'm going to put in i don't know one and a half dried bay leaves these we don't cut up or smash up or anything because well you don't really want to eat them they'll come out when you get to when you get to uh serving it up then we're going to put in i don't know three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper and I'm gonna mix in what you guy can't see. It's kind of a mix of fresh thyme and oregano. I'm gonna mix those up, and that's our seasoning mix. Next, next comes the guest of honor. Now, with some stuff, you might want to bone it. With little animals like this, I will not. Look at that. See, they included the heart in there for me. I'm just going to cut it into sections. And you do it just like it was a chicken or just like I did with the squirrel. Kind of break it at the joint. And there you got a, a back leg and thigh. Oh, 
other back leg and thigh. There's your, your wing drummy and your winglet, I guess you'd call it if it was a chicken. They packed this just like a chicken. It's got a liver in there. We got some good meat on the body of this thing. This is a lot better than than what you see on a squirrel, right? When I cut this in half, now you can see there's some good chunks of meat there across the back, the back strap. So I'm in fact gonna cut that into a couple of pieces. I'm gonna slice it up the breastbone. Crack that back. And I'm just gonna chop this right down the middle. Which will give me a uh, couple of little rabbit breasts. It's like a flank steak there. Take that off, throw that in a pot too. Now, much like with uh, squirrels in the last video, or last cooking video, um, it's always best to get your rabbits either wild caught or at least free range. I think they taste better that way. Um, and also, you know, once you name something and it's in a cage, it's kind of hard to eat it. So yeah, that's probably one reason that we call our dog the dog. All right, next thing we're going to do is take some of our seasoning mix and we're going to we're going to massage it into the little rabbit pieces. I already done some of them, but massage it in nice. Then we're going to put it in this bag with flour and seasoning mix. I just for the flour, I just use. Uh, well, this I got right now is Tony Kacharis Creole seasoning. I also use Zatarans is really good. There's no need to get too crazy. And then put it in a plastic bag, or some people use paper bags, but I found that a bag's the best way to do this without getting flour everywhere and making a big mess. The rest of the ingredients on this are pretty simple. We have some onions that I diced up fairly roughly, some celery, about a rib of celery, two pretty good sized jalapenos that I cut up. Um, careful not to include the seeds and the pith in it because that will make it hot. If you don't include the seeds in the pith, it's not too bad. In fact, they're not hot at all, trust me. And uh, the last thing here is andouille sausage. It's a uh, not seen it. It's a Cajun smoked sausage. It has a really good flavor to it. This one link is going to flavor up the whole mess. It's going to make it much better. If you don't have andouille at the store where you go to, don't worry about it. Use a smoked sausage or if you don't want to, just forget about it. But if you want to make it better next time, put some of this in here. We're also going to use a can of tomatoes, a bag of frozen okra, and I got some frozen corn. I'm going to mix that in there just because it gives it some extra stuff. So now it's time to put this stuff together. Got the st uh, stove firing up, warming up a little bit. I'm going to put some, some olive oil in the skillet. And the first thing we're going to do is to... Uh, Brown up our rabbit pieces. Put you back because there's some more flour needs to get on you. We'll start with this one. That's nice. Add a little leg. Put the other leg in there and got room for the back piece. We'll go ahead and let that cook for a little bit and brown up and then we'll we'll finish browning these. Now while the rabbit is browning, 
may as well get to doing some other stuff otherwise I'll be here all night so I'm going to start off by putting my andouille with a little bit of oil into the cooking pot and we're going to let that render down a little bit and then once that's rendered down I'm going to go ahead and put in the onions, peppers, garlic and celery Wait, flip these puppies over oh they're pretty oh we got the onions and the peppers and the garlic in there mm. put in a little bay leaves now it's time to throw in these pieces of rabbit a little more oil in here This starts to cook, oh it smells so good. I mean that andouille sausage mixed with the vegetables, oh it's good. It kind of makes me feel like there's a, there's an old story. Remember in the, if you watch the uh, Squirrel Bergen Yon video, I talked about Brewster the Rooster. Now where Brewster lived, they were having a, uh, a rooster famine at one point. And in fact, Brewster, in his part of the county, he was the only rooster left. And as I had said before, you know, when you have no rooster to make the hens happy, then the hens get depressed and they fall off their perches and they break their necks and they become delicious. But you can only eat so many chickens when you're a chicken farmer. So, uh, so they started using Brewster as a stud rooster. They take him out to. Uh, the different farms and the farmer was doing pretty well with it but he brought him to this one farm the guy had about 400 hens and he said now look Brewster's the only rooster around here you got to be you got to be careful with him or else he'll just he'll service himself to death so keep an eye on him you got two days he's only got 400 hens he's got two days to do it all in just make sure he paces himself so after the first 200 was done the farmer took Brewster and put him in the crate in the back of his pickup truck and locked him up and then he went and fed the animals and went to bed. And next morning he came out and the first thing he saw was that the crate that Brewster was in was on the ground and it had been busted open and Brewster was gone. Oh, he was scared because he knew oh, if that something happened to Brewster every farmer in the country was going to be after him. Let's flip you over. Oh, that was, this was bad news for the farmer. So he started going through the barnyard. First thing he saw was that every hen in the hen house had been extremely well serviced. They had a look on their beaks like they were, they were satisfied with what had happened. He also noticed that all the other barnyard animals had that same look on their faces. The cows, the horses, the donkey. Even the dog, everything out there had been torn up. He's going, oh my God, Brewster, whoa, what are we going to, oh Brewster, where are you? And he looked out there in the pasture, and I don't know what caught his eye, so there was movement, he looked up and there circling over in the middle of the pasture was a bunch of buzzards. Now where buzzards circle, you know it means there's something that's dead or dying, and Oh, the farmer panicked. He ran out there and sure enough, there laying on his back with his feet stuck up in the air was poor old Brewster. And the farmer went over and he, he lifted Brewster's head up and he said, Brewster, Brewster, are you okay? Why did you do it? What can we do? And Brewster opened one eye and said, Get the hell out of here. They're about to land. You start eating this and you'll know exactly how Brewster felt. Oh, this is nice and browned up now. Hey, look at that. Put that in there. That little leg piece there looks good. Oh, that's nice and pretty. And there we go. Go ahead and turn you off. 
Alright, so go ahead and open our little can of tomatoes. We'll dump that in the skillet. Stir it around a little bit, kind of let it pick up some of the little crispies off of the off the bottom of the pan. We'll dump that in there. Now we got some leftover, oh, a little heart there. We got some leftover seasoning mix. I'm not going to put it all in here, but I'm going to put a good bit of it, especially the herbs, because herbs didn't stick real well to the, and you know, fresh herbs don't stick so well. Got that, let's stir that up. And it looks like the juice from the, uh, from the tomatoes just about covered the, just about covered it, so I'm going to probably add a little bit of chicken broth maybe in a bit, but for now we're just going to let it go. We're going to let it cook for about, I don't know, about an hour and let the, the um, rabbit get so tender that it starts to fall off the bone. Once that happens, then I'll put in the um, okra and the corn, and as soon as that gets hot, we're about ready to eat. Well, while you weren't looking, I went ahead and put in the okra and the uh, corn and let it cook for a little while. Yeah, then we can pull it down here and see what she looks like. So, served it up on a bed of rice. We got some of the back portion and one of the little front leg. Mm, oh, that's very good. Oh, you know, one thing they talk about on uh, most of the cooking shows. Mm, oh, that is so good. Mm. You know, one of the things they talk about most cooking shows is that they pair their food with something, right? Normally, I like to pair this with um, what I used to like was the uh, Budweiser Copper Lager. But they don't have that anymore. I haven't seen it in a long time. So, uh, this was on sale at the store. It's the Stone IPA. So, we'll see how it goes with how you how it mixes with it. Hmm. Not a big IPA fan. That's okay. It's a little bit, got that little bitterness to it, but it kind of does go okay with it. Hmm. That okra is so good. You know, I was kidding about the, you know, eating your booger stuff and hope I didn't hurt anyone's feelings, but you really should try them. If you haven't tried it, okra and tomatoes are just a wonderful thing. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you found something fun in there and enjoyed it. We'll see you soon, huh? Bye.